We are alive and live. I am Dr. Tova Goldfein. I am streaming live from Israel. It is 10 o'clock in the morning, and I am privileged and honored to be here with Karen Neaton, who is joining me in my virtual studio from Queensland, Australia. And I couldn't do this alone, so normally Rose is my sous chef, and she's not here, so thank you for being my sous chef. So we can talk a little bit about Rose and give say goodbye, because the show will go on in her honor, and it would have been 173 shows. It would have, this March would have been four years that um, she had patience with me and enormous. <laughs> Um, integrity about what we did. She had a little bit more integrity than I did, but we did amazing things together. And I was shocked and honored to see the people that responded, Karen, to the Facebook uh, notice, like over like close to 200 people, even her daughters commented. They didn't even know the kind of people we reached and we didn't even meet them. We just reached a lot of people in, in three and a half years, and I couldn't have done it without Rose. And so, Karen Eaton, I'm happy for you to be here with me. Um, you are a nurse and an ISTDP psychotherapist, which Rose was. I met you through Rose. You knew Rose for 30 years. I knew her for three. If you could talk a little bit about your history with her and your timeline, I think it would help people um understand the relationship and kind of pull it all together why you've been on our show three or four times as an expert and as a friend and i am really mm -hmm. happy to be here with you in this hour welcome thank you tova um yeah i didn't hesitate to come on today um rose absolutely loved this show she was always um you know, busily looking for new people to come on the show. And she interviewed people. She was always interested in what others had to say. And um, she was the perfect person to be interviewing because she was just always focused on what other people could bring to TMS uh, Roundtable. So, you know, Rose's funeral was yesterday. So here in Australia, um, actually worldwide because there was a broadcast of her funeral. We got to say goodbye to her officially yesterday. Um, so I joined online and there were uh, there were 135 people that watched online. So it was very well attended funeral, both in person and online. And it was uh, it was a beautiful uh, funeral in the you know, the tradition of the cat being Catholic that Rose was, that was important to her. And she, um, yeah, so her children and her grandchildren spoke at the funeral. And, you know, ISTDP got um, quite a significant mention, really, that, that her children realised um, how much she loved this work, how transformative it was for Rose herself, and also, um, obviously, the response on the TMS Roundtable Facebook page has enlightened her family just about what a big difference she made. Wow. So I'm I just very happy. You. I just want to interrupt you because that's what I do, but then I want you to continue. You know, when Michael Galinsky introduced me to her, um, mm -hmm. she had come to Israel before and then she, we kind of never met, but I want to make this point because when I, he suggested I, I I had this idea of TMS Roundtable when he said, listen, you need to you can't do this alone and I'm not going to help you because you're going to have to do it by yourself. But I'm going to ask you to check on this woman, Rose Hoy in Australia. And I called her and she was like, I'm just about to retire, Tova. So this was like, this is what you're saying. Like it kind of like gave her this like because she was doing some counseling, but she wasn't doing nursing anymore. So. Talk more about that, like her choosing the ICDP and how that came about and how that gave her like this wind of energy and life. Yeah. So, well, I met Rose about 30 years ago. She was my boss. I was a young nurse uh, working in Melbourne and she owned a nurse's agency and she ran it from her home. 
in Melbourne and her children, uh, a lot of them worked for her. So I turned up to her their home for an interview and we just hit it off. And so we were chatting like old friends and I was welcomed into the home and we'd have a cuppa in her kitchen, which was technically her workplace. But um, she always had so much time. So if, you know, there was any dramas with a shift, we could talk or she just liked to hear about what was happening on the ground. She was, she loved nursing. She was a very passionate nurse. And so for probably 20 years of our friendship, we were colleagues and we would share nursing stories, family stories, religious stories. Um, and, um, but we were at very different stages of our lives. I had young children and she helped me work around them. And then, um, you know, I moved around and focused on my career. And then um, one day out of the blue, I, I mean, I had had some very serious and traumatic stuff that was going on with my family. And I rang her and I said, can you help me get a contract overseas? Like, I just wanted to run away. And she said, what do you mean? You've got a young family. Um, and I told her just how traumatic it had been and how I wasn't coping. And she said, oh, no, she said, you need to have this therapy. <laughs> she had um, just started her ISTDB training. She was in her second year. And she said, um, you, you need to have this. It's transformative. So it had been transformative for her. Um, and as a nurse, she knew how powerful it was going to be. So I agreed with her. I didn't have anything else on my schedule. I just needed to get some healing for myself. Wow. So I flew to Melbourne. At that time, ISTDP was only available in Melbourne. So I flew to Melbourne, had ISTDP, and gradually... Um, you know, all of my symptoms got better. So at the time... You had a lot of I physical just, symptoms as well. Yeah. From, so from the ISCTP I, just, I just wanted help with anxiety and depression at the time. But what happened was all of these other symptoms got better. So I had asthma. You know, that was all TMS. I had reflux, back pain, knee pain, plantar fasciitis. I used to have hay fever. And everything disappeared. And so I knew... Yes, we needed this in the hospital system. And this is what Rose was looking for. A partner who was also working in the healthcare system, who was passionate about ISTDP. So I went off and got trained. And she was your, and so you, she was your boss. Then she did some therapy with you. Then you went and got trained. Is that how it went? Yeah, so I did. Yeah, that's right. So I did um, my training and started my own practice and then we became obviously colleagues. So we used to share, you know, um, ideas for our practice because being nurses, it was a bit different to how, you know, so people expect to meet a psychologist or a psychiatrist when they're having therapy. And although nurses are very well trained in um, connecting with patients and, and giving them counselling, um, it was not as common to be in private practice and to be delivering really high level psychotherapy. So Rose and I bonded over that. That was something else we had in common while staying grounded in our nursing and wanting to get more of, you know, ISTDP um, into hospitals where we were seeing these symptoms and, and treating them with medications and, and realising there was something more to these symptoms than... Yeah, yeah than then what was meeting the eye. So Rose was very passionate about um, having ISTDP available in hospitals for patients. And, and that's how we met. And of course, we stayed connected even more once we both had our practices. And although we do practice very differently, yeah. it's sort of the same, but both being nurses, you know, Rose felt that... Um, our practice was probably more aligned because of our passion for nursing. Right. I, I think what when I met Rose, um, Karen, I mean, she was also doing palliative care for others. She'd be called yeah. to come and help people be comfortable. And so she always played that nurse. And even on the show, she was sort of very maternal and very, it was always, in every show, she always bring it back to us all about love. And I'm like, oh, that love thing again. You know, that love card again. You know what I'm thinking? She's talking all this yeah. ISTDP, high elevated 
psychological anxiety stuff. And then she goes, then she brings it back to love, you know, and I'm like, there's something about Rose that's so deep. That was so deep mm -hmm. and so passionate. And she, she wasn't like as talkative as me. And once she got star her started, she would talk, you know, and, and, but um, she always prepared, you know, getting back to like when she started the show, which I think she was in part partial retirement. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, she had a small practice and then I helped her build it into a big practice. She had a small practice. She wasn't, her daughter had, had bought the nursing uh, company and she really wasn't in the hospital. Kate's here with us. Mom wanted to help everyone. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Absolutely. So, she couldn't say no. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's, and that's an interesting thing because, you know, Dr. Gabriel Mate writes a book when the body says no, it's because you're always saying yes. You know, so it's like, and that's not so healthy for the body that you're saying, yes, 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 because you're in deficit, you know, and it's not for us to talk about Rose's health because we're not in living in her body, but she traveled. I mean, when I met her, I'm not a traveler. I mean, I work out, you know, and I exercise, but she would travel to India, to Vietnam. I mean, she had, I want to just share this. Like she had the courage, forget the courage. I mean, there's like being strong. And then there's having courage. I might be strong and I can do some push-ups, but she had the courage. I mean, she was fearless, fearless, you know, going to India and Vietnam. And even when she was here in Israel, I didn't want to do certain things because of various parts of the country. She's like, Tova, I'm going without you. And I'm like, what? She goes, I'll get a taxi and I'm going. She wanted to go to this big church up on the hill. And I was like, no way, I'm not letting you go alone. <laughs> You know, and she was just so courageous and we went to church together. She got she got to read Psalms in this beautiful church on top of this hill. She said when she came here, she said, I want to go to church and I want to go to synagogue. She loved God. I mean, and she loved when she loved Israel. She'd been here twice. You know, but I, I just seeing the bigger picture. I mean, I've only known her for three and a half years, but the bigger picture of who she was, I, I don't really know her. You know, so it's kind yeah, of well, sadness to say goodbye yeah, to like, so her, you know. Yeah, so we're so blessed because Kate, Rose's eldest daughter, has joined us and she said, yeah, ISTDP gave her a new lease on life after we lost Dad. Wow. So, and, yeah. And she so. travelled to Canada. I mean, she spoke to, you know, we had Dr. Alan Abyss on the show. We had Patricia Coffin. We had all her, her amazing teachers who, as soon as Rose called them and said, do you want to come on our on our podcast, I mean, like our broadcast, they were like, yeah, these people are busy people. But if Rose called them, we had about a dozen different mm -hmm. ICDB therapists, even more, Don Fredrickson. You know, we have a, a, a testimonial on our website. You know, it's like she made, people remembered her. Yeah. You know, and yeah. her quiet I'm Irish nature, her, you know, she was a loud, roaring voice. Yeah, she was. And, you know, like even in our training, um, you know, ISTDP, you know, like they talked about attachment, but Rose had such a, an, a living experience of attachment because she had been a midwife and it was so... Forgot all about um, that. Forgot all about that. She delivered yeah. babies. I mean, talk about courage and fearlessness and confidence. And, and stability yeah 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 and she <laughs> she knew um she knew what attachment was like because she she even had a practice helping breastfeeding mothers you know to to be bonding with babies and she was very passionate about the mother infant bond and she worked with mothers and so you know istdp and the whole attachment theory <laughs> thing she was an expert in it really because she had worked so closely with mothers and babies more than anybody else in the ISTDP field because for them it was textbook. You know, we knew, you know, we, we could read about the theory and it made sense and we knew our own experience. But Rose had experience with hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of mothers and babies and wow. she was living and watching this attachment theory play out. And so that's why ISTDP is so... Um, was so powerful for her and for me and for others because 
what we experienced in life and in our work, this was something that mel melded so beautifully. And yeah, so Kate says that Rose around. studied sleep talk as well. Right. Yeah, and, you know, it, it just it was it was a beautiful way to to just to work with attachment theory in the practical way. Rose was so smart; she just she just knew intuitively what people needed. And so ISTP was a tool, sleep talk was a tool, midwifery was a tool, general nursing was a tool, and obviously she saw the live the TMS roundtable as just a, as another tool, just a, a place where people could go and talk and connect and have hope you know have hope mm. so true. um and I, I must say you know she obviously went back to study this i mean ISTP is not for the the calm and the fragile people it is very difficult to study i i would not be able to study it she went back in her in her in her 50s you know 60s study, i think she started her, training study this yeah she, and yeah <laughs> And traveling again to Canada, I mean, Australia to Canada, isn't that like a two-day trip? Yeah, she had so much energy. She was amazing. You know, like um, I'm in my 50s and so, you know, there was almost a generation gap between Rose and I, but I always, it just didn't matter, you know, like, um, yeah, Kate says Rose was 65 when she started training as a master of people. Unbelievable. She, yeah. she might have been the oldest there. <laughs> oh, oh my god yeah but you wouldn't know because she had the same if not more energy than anybody else in the field she just knew how important it was to be bringing it to, to patients and to people right. uh, because it's so transformative it's a right. transformative therapy yeah right amazing um can you tell me a little bit more i mean i do i don't want to i want to be very private because rose was a private person we we were like yin and yang, Rose and I. I mean, we really, yeah. you know, I'd be here like on the, on the, on the camera like this and blow my nose and drink in and, you know, and she'd be, <laughs> you know, kind of stable and like this willow. And I think to myself, what's going on? And, but, you know, we, we, she helped me be a better practitioner, a better doctor. She, I did some therapy with her. My daughter did some therapy with her. She was just, and you know, I'd always want her to come to me and say, Tova, I, I need some help. But she would rarely ever come and say, I need your opinion. I need your advice. But, you know, at times she would, you could see that we had this dialogue and this relationship. And, you know, um, but she was strong. She's, that, I would always say, you know, you're the, uh, she'd say, we're just two old grannies. You know, that's what she would say about the two of us. But I do want to comment that um, she, um, <clears throat> I, I do want to talk just briefly about how, you know, she was very strong for many years. She did have cancer and then she was, she, I don't like to say she beat it, but she met it, it went away. She was strong. She was exercising. She was working out. You know, she was, had a trainer. I think there, at times she'd say, I got to go to the treadmill in the garage, but it's too cold. Like, you know, there was a pool. She'd sometimes get in the water with the kids and she was doing, she was very, very strong for a few years. Then she traveled to India, and then she came to Israel in, um, in, in April, and she was very strong traveling alone with a suitcase. I mean, again, I, I just wouldn't do that, you know? Like, <laughs> it's a very courageous kind of visionary, you know? And a lot yes. of, you know, and so, and then she went back to Australia, and then, you know, the, she, the cancer returned somewhere else, and it was pretty aggressive. I didn't realize how aggressive this particular kind of cancer was. And she was really courageous and very brave to, to, to meet that, uh, you know, to meet that part of her life. And I guess I just want to chat about that in the most humble, private way of just honoring how courageous she was and how brave, because this is not an easy time in people's life. And like Kate knows, it's just so hard for the living because she is just an angel in peace looking over us and kind of just having her green tea, you know, without any honey or sugar, drinking her green tea and kind of being like, thank you, Karen and Tova for doing this, but I'm happy up here. So, but it doesn't feel happy. Like it's sad for us. And I think I just want to chat a little bit more about the, how, how it kind of like her chapter, her book ended, not really ended, kind of ended for me, you know, and how um, I can come to some closure about 
actually, I brought I attracted her into my life, which is I'm honoring myself for attracting such a person into my life um, because we don't attract those kind of people by mistake. She was meant to be. We were some kind of sisters, you know, on on some kind of maybe even Jewish sisters. She loved Israel, you know, and she loved all people. Um, so I guess I do want to just talk a little bit about when you saw her last, because you were able to see her. I mean, she wasn't so much in touch with me. She reached out to me a little bit and say, I know you're thinking about me. I know you love me, but she didn't really want to talk, and that felt hard. So I wanted to have, like, I wanted to talk about every little thing, because we talked about every little thing. We, we talked, we met every day for three years on Zoom, and then met in person. That was, like, how deep that relationship was, you know, in a way. Um, but I, I, if it's okay with you and, and that we could just chat a little bit when you last saw her. Yes. So I saw Rose, it was around about July. So it was just after she got her diagnosis and she needed to, um, she needed to exit from her practice, which was so hard for Rose because she loved her practice. She loved her clients. She loved seeing them. She was making a difference. It was really hard for Rose. So this is where she reached out to me and asked for support in ensuring that her clients had somewhere to go. So she wanted to make sure that they were going to be looked after. And she chose me, which I feel blessed, but so hard because you can't, you know, nobody can step into Rose's shoes. I know that. Um, and so, it, you know, I mean, it's been hard for me, but... You know, we actually made a pact probably about eight years ago that if anything happened to either one of us that we would look after each other's clients because both being nurses, we just wanted to do that for each other. And, of course, then the day came and she reached out to me. So I went to Melbourne because I live up in Queensland and you have to excuse me, it's like 40 degrees here today, so I'm so hot. It's over 100. It's over 100. So yeah. Excuse me for looking so flushed. It's over 100 but, um, degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. Yeah. You look beautiful. So I went to see Rose and she um, she was unwell at the time. She was in hospital. She was sick. And, of course, you know, she just got this new diagnosis. And so, but we did our best because uh, she's very supported by her family. She's got very intelligent and involved children who are Five across children her. and 11 grandchildren. Yeah, and they're across her business. You know, they, they have always worked together and so it was natural for them to discuss business and, you know, platforms that help to manage business and things like that. So so they were able to also help her and I to, to work out, you know, how we were going to contact these people and how we'd transition them if they chose to see um, you know, another therapist. And, you know, some have moved across, some have done their own thing, um, some are still trying to make up their mind. But for, 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 for me and for Rose at that time, um, it was purely about looking after her clients, which, you know, I just wanted to be there for her, but it was completely about the clients at that time. So I spent a couple of days with her um, and then had to leave as you do, you know, you have to share Rose. That's the thing. Oh, yeah. Everybody wanted to see her. Yeah. Everybody wanted to spend time with her. Um, and Well, if she wasn't uh, on the show I mean, with me, she was uh, babysitting or travelling with her family to all sorts of amazing places in Australia. And then at times she yeah. would just take off on herself. And they were like, Mom, Mom, where are you going? I'm going to India. I'm going to Vietnam. I'm heading to Israel. Yeah. Like, you know. But she, I mean, she had her priorities straight. I needed to exit and go back to Queensland and try to look after her clients for her. And she completely focused on her family. They had holidays. They had photos. They they did everything that, that they could manage to do to ensure that the last few weeks and months for her were completely family focused and to make sure that Rose was comfortable and at peace with the process. And, of course, for her, it was always going to be about family. So um, I didn't have a lot of interactions with Rose um, on purpose. After I visited her, 
I knew that her focus needed to be her family and her own well-being and and I felt very content being in the background to support her to transition her patients and that felt like the right role for me and um, you know and I you know I'm very confident that that Rose was doing exactly what she needed to be doing in those weeks and days leading up to when she passed away. Right. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, you knew her for 30 years, and I think what, what I realized by her not communicating with me was not, was one, she had a lot of people in her life. I mean, she had oh, beautiful friends, so many. strong mm. connections around her family and around her work and years of relationships with people. And she was, you know, and you know, occasionally she would talk to me. She would definitely share with me about relationships and people. And I mean, she would open up to me, you know, because I was sort of, you know, a distant, a distant new friend in her life. And I think that's what I realized the last month, um, you know, with, and she was also sleeping a lot and she was tired. I mean, I know there was a lot of pain and she was doing everything she can to, to ease the pain. And um, I know I talked to her, we had a Zoom. I was in America and we tried to Zoom. She was, um, they had brought a wheelchair for her because she was walking, but she was more comfortable, you know, she could go further and they went somewhere far north, uh, somewhere beautiful. She sent me a sunset. And um, like you said, she, she'd focus on what's going on with you. I mean, that was her comfort zone, you know? Um, I mean, if Absolutely. you- Absolutely, it's yeah. always a girl. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, we did talk, we did actually have uh, a few, uh, she did talk to me about TMS Roundtable. She wondered how it would go on. She wondered if, did I want to be a part of it, you know, because I, I don't know, she was wondering about, you know, her practice. And then she knew that TMS was such a big part of her life. Right. And she did, she wondered. And we did talk about, you know, what's going to happen to TMS. Right. And so, um, we didn't have you know, she asked me. Yeah, we were saying, she, we, yeah, she asked me we didn't, if I wanted to be involved. We didn't talk about it. Like, we didn't have, a, you know, any talk about it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been, a, you know, so that's why it's been, it's like, you know, these are tears for me, not for Rose. It's just, it's just, I wanted to, like, have, like, I wanted to have, like, like a last meal with her. I wanted to have a last goodbye and say, okay, this is the fact. This is what we got to do. You know, and then I'll be consulting with you in heaven every week. You know, we'll meet on a heavenly Zoom. Like, and I, I, I think that that's where I feel like having this show is important for me. And I'm thanking everybody and her family for letting me go through my little process. I've never, I mean, I'm 66 and I've never had anybody close to me die like this. I had my parents die, but I was younger. But here I just seen Rose, you know, in April and we, she hung out with me and my family and she met friends and we even saw a few clients together and um we took walks on the beach together and um you know so it just felt if it feel, feels really hard for me and everybody you know when somebody close dies we we look at our relationship with death which when i spoke to michael galinsky you know um whose you know father died you know in the process of making the movie all the rage and then his mother died a few years later he, later he had been here in israel with me doing some shows and his mother was very sick. And so we talked a lot about death and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, I, just, I feel like a little child, like I don't know what, how to handle this. Like she's with me on the flyer and she's with me on the YouTube. And he had this, I didn't know he had this amazing idea. He said, keep her there. And I was like, what a great idea. What an amazing idea. She's gonna be with me. So we put the, you know, we we put in honor of, and I was just so excited. I, I got someone to help me with the Canva, and I got my daughter to help me, and I hired someone to help me with the YouTube. And so she's with me. She's going to be with me. She's going to be with us. And, you know, like the show will go on because what would Rose want? Show goes Absolutely. on. Get on with on. it. You know, yeah. get on with it. She drinks her green tea, you know, her fifth cup of green tea, you know. And so I, I'm happy to be rounding the you know here this curve with you to say that i've you know how i heal and this is what rose did 
you know, I express my sadness and pain through healing others. And I think Rose did that too. We did that in our own ways. We would focus our deep feelings on helping others because that's just what gives us a sense of, you know, of breath. And Rose was just indicated that in every action she took. And it was about others. And she wasn't, you know, she wasn't, she was pretty, she wasn't so selfish. I'm much more selfish than her, I think, in that way. And um, so in honor of her selflessness and her joy and her beautiful smile, I have an entire, like two months of amazing guests coming, you know, and um, a little bit gun shy to do this alone each week. Um, I met some great people. I'm not going to, I don't think I want to co-host. And Rose is not replaceable, but I, I think that it's just nice sometimes to have other people um, come on. And so... Karen, I'd love to invite you once a month and um, cause I need this. I, this is my medicine. This is my chemo, you know, the show and healing. And um, <clears throat> so I just needed to get that out one last time uh, because we didn't get to have that conversation. And I'm really happy that she spoke to you about the round tables. Cause she, I saw that she loved it. I mean, I saw that she, be in the middle of the night texting me about ideas and I was just like Rose go to bed you know so when she you know she wasn't as expressive as as uh, as I am so I didn't know where she was at with the round table and she mentioned it to you when you saw her <clears throat> yeah yeah she was um you know obviously wondering how it would go on and um that sort of thing so what that would look like but obviously um you know there's a whole community in this TMS, you know, round table. And, you know, we're all here to support you to ensure it goes on because it's had such a strong start and it was something that Rose loved. Of course she wants it to go on. Um, so, you know, yeah, we yeah, were they're, they're at the unequivocal, time. no doubt that she wants this to continue, this work. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> She, no, that, we, were, that's... we were actually thinking of work. We had different projects prepared. We were thinking of use, making a workbook. I mean, she had enormous ideas. She had enormous energy and, and like creativity. Like I might have been the petro behind it, like on the, you know, the the Facebook and the social media. But she get she constantly get the guests. She would start every show with a whole bio about the guests, which I kind of didn't do that because she would be so good at it. She'd research it. She'd introduce them and. She had a whole, and I thought she takes she takes the show very seriously. Like that's kind of like, you know, because I wing it sometimes, and I'm like, she's really loves this show, and um, I we had two shows together when she was here in Israel, which was really was really wonderful, and um, I, I wanted to do something about the the, the YouTube, which like, look our Facebook page has a couple thousand people that I've never even met that commented you know on on her passing the youtube channel has about three thousand subscribers and more that interact with us and people say they got better they're healing they're it's working because you know you, we rose and i would and i'd send it to rose and say rose look at this look at that and it was just the, the you know healing is energetic i mean you know you know how that whole thing with people would call the doctor and they feel better because they made the appointment. You know, that's mm -hmm. chemical. That's energetic. And I think our consistency with the show and her showing up and my showing up, and she did a number of shows alone, <clears throat> um, would get out there in the YouTube channel and people were healing. People were getting better without even talking to us. What's that about? I mean, that's energy. Yeah. That's, that's God energy. That's healing energy. That's you know, that's support, that's hope, that's belief, which is all a chemical reaction. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But there's certainly the ripple effects of the program cannot be understated. And those videos will be there forever. So the right people will see them when they're ready to heal and, and have that benefit of yourself and Rose going forward, even from the work that you have already done. So... Right. Um, well, and there were a lot yeah. of people that commented on the Facebook who were her clients in Australia. 
and who were part of her practice um, in Australia and that I didn't know. And um, I kind of want to end, end this with a, just a few words about um, that, um, you know, there's, Rose and I would sometimes um, disagree sometimes because I could get a little bit more like energetic into like the quantum physics world. And I mean, kind of as a nurse, you kind of like, at some point the medical and the science meet and, and the art meet, the medical, the science and the art, they all meet up there, you know? And, um, <clears throat> but the energy, and this is what I, you know, I got into studying and Rose wasn't always so interested in my quantum physics path but how the fields of our energy, like what I'm feeling and thinking affects others. And I think spiritually, Rose was very deep. Spiritually, mm. she'd go way deeper than me sometimes. And she'd want to bring in the spiritual part, you know, and, mm. and I think that's where we could come together between, you know, my experience and my education. And then, um, and we were very different. I mean, she was very, conservative in many ways and I'm more like this free spirit and I, I, I would embarrass her sometimes and I'd interrupt her and I would feel terrible. I mean, I would get hives the next day, I have to call her. You know, like we really had gone through a lot in the beginning when we first met because we saw how different we were and then we, we rode that wave together and, 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 and became very good friends and wonderful colleagues. But the, the energy of, of, you know, the TMS round table, I think has rippled and affected mm. people and, and people were affected by people who had just met her or saw I'm 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 shocked also at the at the people that knew her and met her and what they felt about her. You know, and that's what I want to say that um, about healing. I, I wanted to round up the show. I mean any, anybody wants to say anything and who's listening, you're more than welcome to ask any questions and um, and share. But um, around the quantum physics, you know, there's a strong chemical reaction in the body when we envision, when we um, not only write something down, but draw it, write it, say it, um, almost like, you know, you have to act that way. Like you can't just want something like the research is if I want something, I have to begin to act that way, you know, and I think in each show, Rose brought to each show, it was feeling stable, trusting, like hope and belief and people would just get that. And then we would, you know, we would bring the guests around and then we'd always end with this, you know, and I, and I, I saw how that energy field did work. That's what I'm saying. Like, she was very much the quantum physics, even, even though she might not have believed it so much. Because her studies were so much more rooted in the medical world. And I think the ISDP world opened her up between that and her love and her faith in God, really rounded her out. Yeah. You know, that's where she would come into my world of the, you know, the more body mind and the more, you know, um, I think that's where we 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 are we we made a fork in the road and came together, and I saw that um, only in meeting some of the people that she helped because they I, I met these uh, unbelievable people that she had worked with in Australia that were not part of our show but obviously knew her from Facebook and so there were so many people who I didn't know that were her clients and so. I just honor of her strong psychological or psychotherapy practice and all the clients that she helped and all the people that she helped in palliative care and how you know you were there for her palliatively and um uh you know she the, one of the last texts i got from her was that she was going to see a palliative doctor and i i was so shocked about that i even googled the word because i guess i didn't want to believe that that was the word because palliative could be uncomfortable and I'm around for a long time I think when she wrote that it was just about two weeks later that she she passed and I think that 
you know, I'm just, this is a big chapter for me in my life and it won't need to be mentioned on the show anymore. And that's why I needed this show, this little broadcast yeah. that we can just talk about this and I can understand the reality and how she came into my life to be a big message of reality, <laughs> you know, a big, beautiful message of this is reality. Again, her courageousness and fearlessness is something that I think she, she left with me. And in her, her honor, she, you know, she'd often say to people, are they tears of pity or tears of compassion? And that would be her thing. You know, yeah. are you crying tears of compassion or tears yep. of pity? And I, you know, mine are some pity and some compassion, and just some, just some, why did she leave? Kind of like, I don't want her to leave, you know, all those things that come back as we regress in our sadness. And um, I think for my TMS clients and, and practice, I, I really am expressing um, my feelings. And so I won't be repressing anything and get any kind of symptoms. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for this opportunity um, with you, Karen, to hold the space for me in honor of Rose, because it's really not about roads and sometimes it's about me and um she'd be okay Tova. it can be about you yeah we'll be okay with that yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So, and of course this show is you know for the community too if they feel they need to say goodbye or want to say something about oh i'm back karen I'm back. <sighs> anyway, I'm sure Carol will come back one last minute, but I want to thank anybody that's been here in the studio. Um, you, some of you, your names, I've met you, you know, months ago, you're with us in the presence process, but you did an amazing job um, with Michael Galinsky and myself in working on that book. And um, here's Karen again. So I see some of the names familiar. Marie, I don't know you so well. Hi, Karen, you were saying something about, uh, Karen, come back, come back, come back. Anyway, so Karen will try to come back. We'll say goodbye. And um, again, I hope you'll join us in the TMS Roundtable weekly, sometimes two weeks. We have some amazing guests, people that have healed some amazing stories. And it'll always, always be in honor of Rose, this healing power that we have to heal ourselves. Uh, stay with me for five more minutes, Karen, and let's say goodbye. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, let's say goodbye to uh, our listeners. And I don't really like to say goodbye. So I think it's with Rose that I think the TMS Roundtable weekly, bi-weekly will be an, always a message from her and a message with her. And that's why I, so happy that I was able to um, keep her memory up. It'll be up all the time on Facebook, um, also being on Instagram, on our YouTube, and we're just here. And I know that you'll be available to help people with ISTDP in Australia. And you're also doing some international work because some of her clients here in Israel, I know, are with you. And ISTDP is an amazing thing. I, at some point, I'm going to close the TMS Roundtable website. Um, but I saved um, some things about um, ICDP, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I mean, she could have chosen anything, and she chose ICDP, so shows the mind that she had. <clears throat> so yeah, okay. Well, if we're rounding off, yeah, I uh, just want to say that I'm I'm happy and very honoured to take Rose's seat here today to to turn up and yeah. and give a place for people to feel they can express their grief or their shock or whatever it is about losing such an amazing person. And um, yeah, so it is absolutely my privilege to be here. Uh, Thank you, Karen. For you all. You, your red and, um, the redness quieted down in your face. <laughs> starting, the sun's going down it's cooling down a little here <laughs> right. well, thank you so much yeah. and we'll we'll meet again and thank you for sharing intimately everything that you could and um thank you for visiting us in the virtual studio 
we, we will put this on Facebook so people can hear a little bit more about Rose. And okay, I'm sure that her name will come up because I do not have a show where I do not say, well, Rose would say, or, you know, Rose taught me. So I will continue to honor her because we are all just, um, you know, learning from each other and um, being a channel of healing. And um, yeah, thank you so much. I, I feel like a load off me. You know, there's a lot of research about crying and what it does. And so here's to the tears and here's to the living. And thank you so much to her family for allowing me to be part of it and be continuing her memory. Um, okay, Karen, I'm done. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just say we'll just say good night and we'll just finish up. And, thank you uh, so much. All the best. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>